Hello guys, today I'm going to be bringing you guys the reboot of the Call of Duty World at Work custom zombie map tutorial. I already have a series with it with two videos in it, but I don't like how I explained it. I went pretty mild in detail in it, and I want to reboot it as I thought it would be worth it. Uh, so I'm starting again from the beginning with it. So what you're going to need for this is obviously you're going to need Call of Duty World at War. That's what we're going to be making our custom maps for. Um, you can have either the Steam or the Cracked version. I have the Steam version because I bought it. Uh, but you can use it with the Cracked version. But I recommend the uh, Steam version as you can play online and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah. So, on your clean install of World at War, if you've just installed it or anything, you're not going to have all these files. The only reason I have all these files is because I have the mod tools. And these mod tools are essential for making custom maps so uh, the download link is in the description below and you're gonna need the mod tools uh, it should be a zip file I can't even remember the size I think it's like 500 megs uh, but it's well worth it go ahead and download it and then uh, follow the instructions and extract the files into your world at war directory and you'll have the mod tools so once you've done that uh, you should find your bin folder in your Call of Duty World at War. Now, if you're using Steam and you can't find this, it's usually, uh, it's in your local disk, obviously, and then in program files, for me, it's in Times86 because of my bit operating system. Uh, it's in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and then Call of Duty World at War. And then you're going to go into bin. So if you look in the bin, here is all of our mod tools. So we have an asset manager, an asset viewer, the Radiant tool, the converter, the copy assets, the text editor, launcher, all this kind of stuff. We're not going to be worrying about too much of this at the moment. Uh, we're just going to be focusing on the launcher and the World, uh, World at War Radiant tool. So it's, let's say we wanted to go in the Radiant tool, which is basically the map editing tool. We are not going to launch it through here. We are going to launch it through the launcher, so double-click launcher. So once you've done that, you'll have this little screen pop up, and this is basically a control panel for your mods and for your custom maps. So if you look over here, you should see a list of maps. Now, you are not going to have all these maps. Uh, the only maps you should have, if you're just using mod tools, uh, like you've just installed them and this is your first time, you should only have bare bones, Bessie, MP underscore bare bones, and payload. The only reason I have all these maps is because those are maps that I have created. So once you've done that, uh, you should see all this stuff on the side, compile level options or whatever. We're not going to be worrying about that yet. Uh, that's for compiling the map, and we're going to get into that later. So if this is your first time running mod tools, you're going to go ahead and run the converter. Now, I've already ran mine, so it's not going to complete. It's going to give me this little error. But if it's your first time running them, you should see it go through, and then here we sh you should see something along the lines of done or completed or something like that, and we can go ahead and begin. So once you've had all these, we're going to go ahead and create a map. Now, over here, we'll have two map templates, multiplayer and single player. Now, Zombies is considered part of the single player engine. Even though you're allowed up to four players in a Zombies match, it's still, con uh, it's still considered and is under the single player engine as opposed to the multiplayer one. So, in order to make Nazi Zombies work, we're going to need to put a uh, certain map name. So, we're going to need to put Nazi underscore zombie underscore and then your map name. If you don't have Nazi underscore zombie underscore in your map name, it's not going to work correctly. Now, unfortunately, there's a character limit, so you're only allowed three characters after your map name. So I'm just going to make mine CVE, as I'm going to make mine for the cave, uh, or a cave for the sake of the tutorial. So once you've done this, you should, you should see your zombie map appear in this list right here. And if you do, you can go ahead and launch the Radiant tool. Now, if you're new to the Radiant tool, this might be a little bit um, of a learning curve, not too much of a learning curve. It's pretty easy to understand, but here is uh, the basic explanation of it. So up here, um, this is just the window toolbar. Down here we have our textures. Uh, this is what we're going to be using to texture our brushes, which we'll get into later. Here is our map editor. This is what we're going to be using to draw our brushes and add our you know, perk machines, all that kind of stuff. We're going to be doing that right here. Here is where our 3D preview is going to be. We are going to be using this to preview the map as we make it, and we can also select objects in this editor as well. Up here we have our IDE, so we have uh, many different things. We have open, save, uh, rotate, and flip, the clipper tool, which I don't really like very much, the hollow tool, which we will be using later on. And we have a whole bunch of stuff over here. 
If you want to find it with all these memes, you can go check out the wiki, but uh, I'm not really going to go into that in this video. So up here we have our basic menus. Uh, the one we're going to be, like, the ones that we're really going to be focusing on is file, grid, and textures. So after you've explored the Radiant tool a little bit and got to know it, you can go to File and Open. Now in here, this is all of our map files. So when you created your map in the launcher right here, it basically created your file for you in map underscore source, and it's a dot map extension. So if you created it in there, it will be in here. You don't need to create a file in here. It will be automatically generated. So I'm going to find mine, which is right here. I'm going to go ahead and open it. So once we've done this, we should see a nice little map that Treyarch has put together for us. We have our beautiful walls with one, two, three, four on them, uh, telling us that we can count. Uh, beautiful gray color. And then the floor, we have the uh, something similar, except for in a green color. And then we'll see all these pink boxes around us. These are called path nodes. And these are extremely important in your zombies map. We're going to be putting these in last as... Uh, they can interfere with map editing, but these are extremely important. So what these basically do is they tell the zombies what to do. So let's say, uh, let me just raise my camera up here. Let's just say I deleted these four path nodes. Uh, so to delete, use the backspace key and to select objects, either in here or in here, you're going to use shift and you're going to click on the object and use escape to deselect all objects. So once we've done that, so see this little area where there's no path nodes say somebody one of your players on your map was coming through here and they ran through this area the zombies would get in this area and then they get stuck here and they'd all be standing standing in a circle dumbfounded because they don't know what to do path nodes tells them what to do so if, uh, you have to have path nodes throughout your map in the playable area and from the spawn to the windows when we're going to be adding that later um, I believe the maximum they can be apart is 128 units. So that's these little squares. Um, and yeah, so they can be anywhere in that 128 unit range, but they cannot be touching or they won't work. Over here, you'll see a little green box that, are, that is a reflection probe. Oh, we're not really going to worry about that yet. But if you run your map and you see a whole bunch of rainbow colors and a bunch of weird shit, uh, you feel like you're high or something, that's probably because you don't have this guy in there. And if you go over here, you should see a red box. This is our player spawn, or sorry, not our player spawn, our player start. Now, you may see this and think, okay, this is where all the players spawn, but how does that make sense? There's one box, and all the four players spawn in this box is impossible. This just has the keys and value pairs, or key VPs, for our players. Our players are actually going to be spawning in script structs, which we're going to be going through in the next video in spawns. But this basically just tells the character what to do. And this is also very interesting because it can be very useful in map editing as we can use it to scale our maps. Uh, one time I made a map and I thought, oh my god, this is great. And then I added in my player start and it was like halfway through the roof, halfway through the floor. And it's like, damn, this thing's like a dollhouse. So I recommend adding that in early just so you can scale your maps properly. And then if we exit out of our map here, you will see a light grid volume. It's obviously not... Um, you can't see it on the inside, but on the outside you can. Uh, this is very important. We're going to be working with this later, but we're going to add it in last as well as our uh, reflection, or sorry, not reflection probes, um, path nodes. So we don't really need any of this. This is just something the Treyarch has put together for us. The only thing we need in here is our skybox. So we can just hit the I key to select all and hit the backspace. And there goes our beautiful map that Treyarch made for us. All their hard-earned work, and it's now gone. Okay, so I'm just going to bring it over here. So I personally like to start at the origin. Uh, sorry for that sound. That's just the autosave on here, I think. But uh, I personally like to start at the origin, which is 0, 0, and you will find it marked Z. Uh, oops. And, uh, yeah. So to create a brush, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, left-click, and we're going to drag. And it's basically a grid-based editor, as it has these little squares, and that's your units. Now, if you go over here on the editor, I'm going to go over to my brush, right over here. And when you create a brush, unless you've, uh, well, for your first brush, brush at least, you will find this beautiful little che uh, checkered texture on your brush. 
And this is the exact same one that if you go on MW2 that you see in modded lobbies on the maps. And the 11th Prestigers, like the 11th Prestige Hackers. But, you know, yeah, but we're going to change that. Um, I'm not sure what texture it appears as in game. I believe it's invisible. So it's not good to have because your players can spawn on this thing. And it's like, oh, I'm spawning in midair. And then they run off the brush and then they fall out of the map which you're not going to want. It's not going to be a very fun game. So I'm just going to change my view. So to change your view, there are three types of views. Side view, uh, I think there's the two side views, and there's the top view. Now to change your view, you're going to hit the Control Tab key, and this changes your view. So I'm going to make it one unit, as this is going to be a floor, so we don't need it any more than one unit. And there we go. So now I'm going to change this texture, and to change it, we're going to go up into our Textures menu, go to Locale, and I'm going to change this to Tools. Now, in our Textures menu, we're not going to be really worrying about any of this, um, at the moment at least, but the ones we're going to be worrying about is Usage, Locale, and Surface Type. Um, well, actually, not Usage. I never use usage, usage. I just find no use for it. I just use Locale. It's basically defining what it is. If it's all, case, test, tool, decal, all that kind of stuff. And then surface type, if it is all, if, uh, say I wanted to find grass, I'd go over here and I'd find grass textures. Since my, now this is something here. So since our locale is set to tools, our surface type grass, there is no grass tools, obviously. So you'd have to check this to all to find grass textures down here. And I'm going to change it back to tools, and I'm going to change the surface type back to all. So what we're going to use is we're going to use a texture called chalk. And this is a yellow texture that has, uh, chalk written all over it. Now this is not what it'll appear as in game. In game this appears invisible. Uh, similar to what I think the checkered board texture appears like in game. So yeah, so I'm going to hit control and shift and click the top face and what this will do is it'll allow you to only select one face instead of selecting the whole uh, thing. The reason I'm doing this is this is a floor so nobody's going to see the bottom of it or the side of it unless they're no clipping which they shouldn't be doing in the first place uh but yeah so we don't really need it we don't need the texture besides that people aren't going to be seeing regularly so i just texted the top surface to save memory so once we have that we're going to change our locale back to all and here's where some customization comes in so i'm making a cave but if you are making i don't know a house You'd obviously use like a, I don't know, a wood floor, some nice wallpaper, all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to make a blank cave. <laughs> so I'm going to pick rock. There it is, rock. So for my floor, I'm going to make it... Let's choose a floor here. That looks pretty beautiful. Uh, make and decal gravel. Now, if you can notice it here, our texture is a little bit stretched. Um, well, actually, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do earlier. I'm going to add in my player spawn just to sort of get a look at what I'm doing here. So to add a player spawn, you're going to right-click on the map editor, and you're going to go to Info, Player, Start. And this will create a little red box. Now, you're going to want to make sure that this is above the ground. Not super above the ground, so they spawn in midair, but just just above the ground, but not in the ground, uh, if you know what I mean. And this is basically what we're going to be using to scale our map. So this floor is actually okay, um, can, according to this model, this floor is actually good. So I'm just going to keep it like that. But if you wanted to change it, you can go ahead and go into the surface inspector and change the horizontal and vertical stretch. But I'm not going to, as this looks good to me. I'm just going to make my room a little bit bigger. That's a little bit small. I'll make it 3 by 3 on each side, I guess. There we go. My beautiful little room. This is just going to be the starting room. And then I'm going to make my walls. So, some people don't know this, but if you go ahead and click Shift and click your brush, you can copy and paste your brush just by pressing the Space key, and that'll create a copy of it. So I'm going to switch my side, uh, switch to my side view here to create my walls. Now I'm going to make this just a little bit above the player start. Like I said, I'm using this as a model. So I want the player to be able to jump in my room, especially since it's a cave and caves aren't generally right here 
uh, head, maybe at some points they are, but usually they're big. So I'm going to make it go up to here. That seems like a good size. So I'm just going to hit spacebar to copy it again. Now, no need to create another brush or anything. Just hit the spacebar and it'll save you a lot of time. And I'm just going to hit it again. And I'm already going to start working on my roof. There we go. Okay, so there we go. So we have two walls. We have a roof. Now I just need to do the two other walls. So I'm just going to copy this. And, nope, wrong way. And put it on the other side. So here's my room. Now I'm going to change this top chalk texture. <clears throat> so you can texture things different to uh, textures, obviously. So you can make the ground a wood texture, and you can make the walls a different texture. But I'm just going to make it um, a similar texture since it is a cave. So I'm just going to select different surfaces. Now, if you hold down Control and Shift or or whatever, I'm just selecting one face. So if you hold down Shift to select whole objects and hit Control Shift to select faces, um, you can select multiple ones. So I'm just going to select a quick cave texture. That looks pretty nice. I actually like that. So there we go. So there is our little room. Now my mic is dying, so I'm going to try to cut this a little bit shorter. But in the next video, um, well, I'll explain that later. <laughs> so here we have our basic little room. And yeah, so that's all I'm going to cover in this tutorial. I'm just going to put this out of the way. Yeah, that looks good. So yeah, so we've created our basic little room. We've learned a little bit about Radiant. And yeah, so that is all I'm going to be showing you guys in this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like below. Comment any questions or comments you have on the video and subscribe. In the next video, I'm going to be bringing you guys how to make spawns. So adding script structs, the KVPs, and adding zombie sp uh, spawners. And in the third one, we're going to get into windows and all that fun stuff. Uh, so yeah, so this is a little bit unusual that I did upload this on a Thursday. But as well as this, tomorrow I'm going to be bringing you guys the Python videos as well. Like I said, I just wanted to get this reboot going. So until then, peace.